So today we're here talking about cash flow freedom. So um, especially in this time that we're actually in, cash flow is going to be an issue for multiple, if not all of us. Um, so today we're actually going to be talking about things that we can do to actually improve cash flow and, and different ideas. So for those of you who don't know who Accountable is, this is me and Natalie. Um, we are accountants, so we're a team members, so it's uh, the Accountants and Tax Agents Institute in New Zealand. Um, we do bookkeeping uh, for our clients, we do the, the boring compliance work, the financial accounting, just like for IRD, which doesn't mean much for small business. Morning Katrina. Um, we also do business development, so we can actually work with you on strategic plans and um, getting you up and running. One of our specialties is IMXIRD and used to be a company liquidator as I worked with companies in financial difficulty. So we take companies that are struggling financially and we help turn you around to become a um, profitable company. So it's, it's quite exciting to do that sort of work. Today, so we all know cash flow is the lifeblood of a business and what I see all, so often, and we saw it at IRD and I saw it when I was doing my insolvency work, is that poor cash flow is the number one reason many businesses fail, small to medium enterprises fail. 82% of small to medium enterprises struggle due to poor cash flow. So that's quite a huge number. Um, zero Small Business Insights, on average, so if you're working on zero, they've actually taken all of that data and have a massive amount of information that we can use to then predict what's going to happen in the economy. On average, 51% of small to medium enterprises in New Zealand were cash flow positive in any given month in 2019. So that means 49% were not cash flow positive. So that's actually really scary, that 49% were not in a good position. Invoices were paid on average 8.3 days late. So when we actually think about that, if your invoices are being paid eight days late, that's impacting on your cash flow and you're going to struggle financially. So... When we look at Australia, they're slightly better. So that's actually, they're doing slightly better than what we are, but still the same amount of money. So today we're going to actually talk about planning for what ifs, um, increasing the sales outcomes, lowering the cost of your sales. So <laughs> also the big question that we get asked all the time is, you know, when I say, oh, you've got a $50,000 profit, People always say, well, where's all the money? So we're actually going to look at that as well. Um, we're going to take a look at budgeting forecasts, profit drivers, what your next steps, and then we can actually have a discussion around what is the, the questions that you guys have actually got. So how can a tougher economy affect your business? And I think if we're all realistic, um, this is where we're heading. So current customers may stop buying. Uh, we're going to get fewer inquiries or leads. We're going to make, uh, it's going to be more difficult to make a sale. Customers return less often. So once upon a time, they might have actually bought from you five times a year, but now they might actually only buy for three. Um, they spend less each visit because everyone's going to be penny pinching and watching where their money goes. Um, Selling price competition it drives me out the wall when people try and undercut everyone else because at the end of the day, there's only one winner and that's not any of you guys in business. Increase in cost of stock. So not only are you guys actually having to not get the sales, you're actually also going to be, um, your, your cost of goods sold is going to increase because your suppliers are also going to be in the same position. So managing your cash flow now is probably the most critical thing that you can do in your business. Um, 
we've already seen first of April less deliver cotton socks increased wages. So um, there is some challenges coming for us in business. And you know, with all the money that the government is actually poking, uh, sticking into the economy to try and keep business afloat. And um, they did announce last night on the news that there is something else coming. So that'll be interesting to see what's in the budget tomorrow. Um, I would expect interest rates will actually go up in the next few years because somewhere along the line, um, and, and they're even talking about tax rates actually going up to try and actually recoup some of this money. So now is the time for you guys to learn these skills and really analyse your business. So if we're going to jump into this one here, let me see how good I am at technological stuff. Can you see my pretty little spreadsheet? Yep. Yep. Cool. It's cool. <laughs> okay. So effectively what we're trying to do is we just need to actually have a look and see um, what's going to happen in your business. So let's say at the moment you've got 5,000 existing customers. In this new world, we, um, we're going to lose some of those because they go out of business. So we're going to go, we've got 475, 4,750. 4, so we lose a few clients. So right then, our net profit has just dropped by 50 odd thousand dollars just by losing those clients. We've currently got a retention rate of say 90%. So if we've got all of our clients and we're actually keeping them and we're servicing them and we're doing fantastic stuff, but something goes wrong and we just can't do that. So we're only going to be able to retain 85% of our client base. So you can see our net profit is actually dropping substantially just by losing some clients and not retaining the ones that we do have, any new ones coming on. So therefore we've got, these are our retained customers, so that's further down. In the past, we've actually got 500 leads in a year. So we're going to be slightly impacted by this, and let's say we now aim to get 485. Oops. And our conversion rate on that is only 70%. So you can see we're now down 120,000 in net profit. And this is just by losing, like, you know, we will lose clients. I myself, in um, the first week of um, this COVID-19 sort of coming into play, we actually lost three clients in, in two days because they all panicked. So for us, we're impacted and everyone's going to be impacted in some way. It may not be now, but it may be actually further down the line. So then by the time we actually look at all this, we've got 4,377 customers. It would be fantastic if we actually had that many, but that's what we've currently got. And these guys in the past have, already, have always had six transactions per year with us. If something happens, and the money is not in, out there in the economy, and they only shop with us four times, we're now sitting at a loss of $99,000. So this is big dollars, this is big figures. But you can sort of understand how this can actually impact your small business. Okay, if we had, um, you know, 500 clients, And, yeah, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Oh, mind you. Average transaction value, let's just have a look at that. It goes from $100 down to 90 So annual sales have gone from 510000 down to 267 So mm. just by losing... 25 clients up front because they all pulled out 
and we're not actually retaining our clients as, as well because instead of 90%, we're now only retaining 85%. So we're losing a few more. We're not getting the leads generated like we have in the past. And we're not converting as many as what we already as what we have in the past as well. And then they're not actually shopping with us as often and they're not giving us as much money. So it's just about half our turnover just by losing those few things. But we're not talking huge amounts of people here. This is actually small transactions. If however our cost of goods, so we've already said that suppliers are actually going to increase their rates potentially. So let's say our cost of goods sold previously was 60%, it's gone up slightly, so we're now sitting at 62%. And then our expenses, because our wages, let's just drop that down a bit, shall we? Um, so if we said that was 250000 and our expenses, because our wages have actually increased, that now becomes 275000 Let's just make it a little bit better. Our old profit would have been a negative 46, but based on this new scenario of not having the customers, of having increased cost of goods, it's now 173000 which is a loss. Very negative, isn't it? <laughs> so that is a really rough example mm. of how little tiny changes can actually impact. If, for example, we actually made, got new customers out of all of this, and we generated more leads, We were able to increase sales. It's a much different picture. You've just made $100,000 and all we've done is added 25 clients and $10 extra. So there is a way around this. Just need to think about it and, and understand. So hopefully we're now back onto the growth equation. Any questions on that growth equation? No? No. Uh, pretty sad. So, <laughs> it, it, it is pretty sad, but <laughs> it doesn't need to be. And no. I think this is the thing is that if you go into this whole situation that we're coming into, with your eyes closed and your head in the sand, yeah. that will happen. Yeah. But if you yeah. actually go into this with an idea of this is um, what is going to happen and put the steps in place, which is what we're going to talk about now, um, then you could actually be in that position where you actually increase your clientele because, let's face it, everyone wants support right now. Am I correct? Do you guys all want support or do you want to be left alone? Rather have the support, no <laughs> guidance? I need it. Yes, so, definitely. <laughs> this is where you guys have actually got the ability to actually do incredibly well because you're, you're sort of understanding what needs to happen out in the community for you to actually do well in business. So, number one, how to increase customer retention. And the biggest thing, under promise and over deliver. So right now, people are gonna be hurting. They're going to actually um, do anything. They're gonna promise anything to actually get more clients. So if we increase our clients, we increase our profit. People right. are gonna be struggling, so therefore, so people are gonna get desperate. What you need to do is under promise and over deliver. So say, Yes, I can do this in 15 days and then deliver it in five. Really blow people's socks off. Know your customer. And I've got, you know, my coffee groups that we run, um, they are all creating avatars so that they can really get to know and understand who their client actually is. 
if we know who their client is, then we can actually market to them. We can supply the support that they need just by understanding who they're actually working with. It's really quite powerful to do that. Times like these, that you could consider a um, customer loyalty program. So if you get um, word of mouth or, or something like that, try to do it so that it's not costing you money, but it's making your current clients feel valued. Um, we don't want to be adding too many more costs to your bottom line with the current environment that we're in. Have a look at the market you're in. Um, is there a possibility that you can actually offer guarantees that no one else will? Is it that you can say, um, working with me, you're going to lose a few, let's say you're a personal trainer, Working with me, I'll guarantee you'll lose three centimetres off your waist if you do da 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 da, -da within a set period of time. Um, it might actually be if you're a childcare provider, um, working with us, you'll have less stress because we'll make sure everything's okay for you and we'll support your families. Or, you know. Have a think about your organisation, the industry you're in, what can you do to actually support people more? Actually ask customers what they want. Quite often we'll actually work with a client and they'll be going, well, my clients want X, Y, Z. And it's like, well, how do you know that? And so um, we actually go out and ask the question of clients and it turns out they wanted ABC. And so this business had been going, well, we think you want X, Y, Z and we're giving you X, Y, Z and we couldn't grow the business and that's because we were not giving them ABC. So we changed, gave them ABC suddenly things actually became a lot more clearer and we made a lot more money. So actually talk to your customers, ask them what your, their thoughts are, how you can support them better, and then you'll actually get buy-in from them when you turn around and give them what they've actually asked for. Potentially you could hold invitation-only events once again if you're an um, early childhood, have a family day, bring people in, um, there, you know, that may have some difficulty, especially if you can only have a two metre radius apart, depending on what happens tomorrow when they announce the new level three. Um, but your biggest key at the moment, everyone is sitting at home. Everyone is actually bored out of their brain. Um, although I am hearing a lot of people's gardens are looking incredibly fantastic. Um, but they're on social media, so make the most of it. Now is the time, regardless of whether you're operating or not, now is the time for you to start engaging with your customers on social media. Whether it be whether it's um, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever. Now is the time to be doing your marketing because people have got the time to actually look at it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. yes. So don't wait for everyone to go back because then they won't really care about you. They'll be too busy back in the panic of being back. So how to increase leads? Um, build a strong online presence. So get that website up and running. Get that Facebook. Have those regular posts. And you want to be posting at least three times a week. Um, and I always, back when I was good at this, and did it for myself. <laughs> um, I would say on a Monday, this would be the theme that my post would be. So Monday would be, this is a service that we offer, so I would post about something that we do. A Wednesday, the post would be, um, this is educational. So this, did you know that um, the BNZ actually duplicated all transactions in zero bank account, and so you've now, just be careful when you reconcile. That happened last week. And Friday would have been a Friday funding, funny. So something light to finish the week. And so it was easy for me to sit down and do three months of my Facebook post because this is how it actually went and this is what we did. And I could just make up a series. So really think about your industry, who your clients are, what do they actually want to see, and then actually make that plan. At the moment, none of you are working. So now is the time to make your social media plan. Set it all up, and then you don't need to worry about it for three months. 
and that means you can go back to focusing on the business and getting it up and running. But your social media is actually sorted. So have a talk to your customers. Implement that referral program. So if you refer someone to me, I'll take your dog for a walk. Um, and good idea, Brett. We'll just mute people. Um, and if you have a question, by all means, unmute. But it does make it a little bit difficult. So. But you still need to talk to me because otherwise I'm just weird and talking to myself and that's not okay. Um, attend networking events. Once we're all back up and running, attend some networking events. Actually get in and start telling people what you do. And um, I'm sure you won't mind Linda, but talking to Linda the other day, she said she actually runs an after-school childcare program. And it's like, actually, no, that's not what you do. You actually take children, you care for them, you actually educate them, you support the parents, you're there for the family. So just be really careful that when you are attending networking events, you're not dumbing down what you actually do. You offer so much more than the title of what your business does. So just really think that one through. Host webinars, seminars. Um, with technology the way it is, you can actually do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so really make the most of getting out there. Don't, don't just sit back because we're at home for four weeks and we can't do stuff. There's a heap of stuff that you can actually do using technology. Get your business cards out. So it might actually be, you know, you go to the fish and chip shop or, or any of those places and there's a business card wall, actually put your business cards up on the wall so that people can actually sit and, and look at what's out there and who's, who's available. So it's definitely a, a good way to increase public awareness about you. This is what we need to do to actually increase your leads. For some of you who are bigger firms, um, and I do have one of my clients, which I wouldn't say they're big, um, but they actually sponsor a local sports team. So on the back of all their shirts, and it's actually not that expensive to do, is their company name. So they actually do get quite a bit of work because they're at the um, netball courts and the basketball courts, and people are actually seeing their company all the time. So they do actually pick up some work by actually just seeing that branding around. It's all about um, increasing people's awareness of you and what you do and how you do it. And so the other option, or the other thing you should all be thinking about doing is actually sending regu regular newsletters out to people. Now is the perfect time to be doing the newsletter type thing. MailChimp is a, is a perfect, um, easy to use software and it's free as well. So it's, it's quite good to just keep in touch with your clients and now's the time to be communicating with them because like you said, we all need support right now. So once we've got those leads, how do we then actually turn those guys into customers? Not many of us have actually got sales teams because we are the sales team. And not many of us actually like sales, and so it's easy to actually just not do the sales and hope for the best. You need to actually understand your unique selling point. And I always say, look, if, if you know what you can deliver and you know your difference, so like, yes, we look after children after school, but we also um, do education, we also do this, we also do that actually work out exactly what it is that you do and what your unique selling point is. And then we can actually start um, really getting an understanding. We, we know our customers, we can feel our customers' pain, and then we can actually deliver a, a package to them that actually works for them. Consider offering alternative payment methods. There's so many out there now with like Stripe, you can do online, there is um, 
What are those other ones? Afterpay, all of that sort of stuff. So there's, there's various options that you can actually do. Um, uh, fee funders, I think, support like vet, veterinary clinics and daycare centres and all that sort of stuff. So there's different options that you might be able to help your clients with at this point because we all know that they're going to be struggling financially. Utilise testimonials and case studies. Um, actually reach out to the current clients that you've got and actually say, hey guys, would anyone be willing to actually give me a testimonial or even better, a video testimonial of what it's like to work with you? You might actually say, if you can give me a video testimonial, then um, I'll give you a free session or 50% off or like give them an incentive to actually give you this stuff. Once you've got a video testimonial and you're putting that on Facebook, you're going to actually start building that credibility a lot more. And when you look at websites and you've got um, all this amazing stuff written by A.H. Harry, it's like, really? Yeah, is that real or is that just someone's made up stuff to stick on their website? A video testimonial is someone who is actually real, you can see their face, you know who they are, and it, it comes across as a lot more believable, and people will actually um, buy off that. So offer a free trial or a money-back guarantee. It might be that you come up with a way to um, deliver a service, but you just let people taste it, what, what they've got. Then you get that chance to build rapport with that client. They get to see how good you actually are, and then suddenly you've got them hooked and you've got that new client. Um, if you are a um, retail client, you could actually offer online shopping. That's doing quite well at the moment. All the online businesses are actually doing really, really well. And allow customers to book appointments online. Sometimes you want people to be able to go online and actually do it all for themselves because if they know that they've got to contact you and they think you're busy, then they're not actually going to contact you. They'll go somewhere else because they don't want to be a hassle to anyone. So, so really think about how you can actually attract these clients and um, how you can, once you've got them to the door, how you can open that door wide and get those people to walk through. So what I want to ask, has anyone got any ideas on what they can do in their business to actually increase the leads and turn those leads into customers that you think you might try. Happy to unmute any one of you. Yeah, hi guys, it's, it's Gregor here, um, or Greg. Um, I've got a personal trainer business, so what I'm doing is I'm just engaging with my existing clients at the moment, just sort of obviously there's a lot of free stuff out there, so I'm not actually out to make any money off them right now. I'm just letting them know that I'm there to support them. Um, yes, there is online personal training, but every man and his dog's doing that at the moment. I'm going to just just wait and see. I am actually able to do that. Um, but just with the evaluated stuff I'm just giving them at the moment, I'm keeping in touch with them. I've got a recipe book that I've given to them, things like that that I've had developed for quite a while. Um, so it's more about sort of, um, yeah, just adding value to where we're at now because um, they might not feel that they need me. Um, but just offering that support, and obviously that's what a personal trainer does, so just providing that support for them. Yeah, and I think that's um, completely the right way. Like At the moment, they can't actually go anywhere or do anything. Um, and I was just talking to Natalie this morning, and um, she's eating quite a bit because she's at home all the time. So I said, well, what we need to do is get our clients to ring you more because then you can't eat while you're on the phone. So... <laughs> So if clients actually ring us, they're actually saving Natalie's waistline. So that would be really cool. <laughs> so it's, yep. it's just actually thinking about different ways that you can actually support people. Right now, they may not need you because their current circumstances mean that they don't actually need you. But we still want you to be front of mind when our situation changes. We don't want them running off to someone else who's built a rapport over the four weeks because you guys have been lying on a beach like Linda there. Um, we actually want them to actually still want to work with you once this is all over. So, 
Um, and Janine just said um, she liked the idea of asking for a video testimonial. I could offer them 50% of a baby massage class once their baby is born. So I mean, that's actually really quite um, a nice idea is to actually have that video testimonial to then actually promote to, especially at this current time, pregnant women are actually quite freaked out with everything that's going on. They've got lack of support when it comes to being in hospital because we can't have groups around, grandparents can't come and hug the baby. Now is the time for people like Janine to be offering this extra support. And if we got that on video from someone saying, oh my God, the amount of support I actually got, is just going to mean so much more to the next person who's considering purchasing that service. Taking clients, taking online clients now. What's that? Yeah. So in the in that chat group, um, Greg has just posted a whole bunch of stuff. An almost perfect environment for your body, for your journey to being a fitness model bodybuilder. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a humour post um, that kind of oh. had other other sort of because I mean you know you get the serious ones, you get the human ones. Excuse me, I'm looking after children in the background. Sorry guys. <laughs> um, as you do at home, right? When your wife's an essential worker, she's a nurse. Um, Get on it. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So um, yeah, just just a humour post that kind of has other sort of. You know, I don't actually go out to train bodybuilders, no way. Uh, but by the same token, it's just a bit of a joke about being in lockdown and stuff like that. Um, yep. And I actually did have a client uh, flick me a text and say, I've got all these mixed messages coming through on my Facebook feed. You've got a motivating one there. And I've got a candy bar one straight underneath it. So um, that's just that engagement, just keeping them sort of, because a lot of stuff going up there, a lot of people copying and pasting stuff at the moment. So definitely that social media is a good one to, to get on board with. Oh, totally. Completely agree. So, another option is um, hey, Brett, do you want to just talk about your funnel sales marketing that you're doing? Um, yeah, I, I must say, I'll be honest with you, I am, I'm learning about this at the moment. Um, but I think the big thing is it's all good going out there and offering. Uh, free service, free product, but you've got to try and get the viewers' contact details so you can keep uh, some sort of link or communication with them. Yep. So I've been looking at funnels, and you can make everything free as long as they register with you. Yep. So you can offer them a free, I'm just thinking of the, 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 the gym that's uh, a gym uh, instructor or, uh, you know, mentor, you know, geez, uh, you know, get a free uh, book, get a free this, get a free that, but... Yeah, if you've got their information, um, they, they are a future customer. So that's how I'm looking at things at the moment. Totally, totally. And um, at the end of the day, if, it's, if, it's, if they want it, they're going to give you the details. And if they don't, then they obviously are not your ideal client in the first place. So um, next thing that we need to do, so we've increased our leads, we've increased our conversions, We've then now got to try and make more money per transaction. So um, right now we're probably going to struggle to increase increase prices. We're not New World and, and Countdown. So, um, that's possibly something to think about further on, you know, and supply and demand. If there is more demand than what there is supply, then yes, you can increase prices. But at this stage, I think you're better off to just stay that whole um, supportive service there for the benefit of clients, not to actually rape and pillage their, their wallet. Avoid discounting. And we're going to look at that further down the line, how discounting is actually going to seriously impact you. Package products together. Exactly, Kerry. Um, it might actually be that you buy um, antenatal classes and you get two free, um, two free massage classes and but you're going to pay a package price. And so that way you've got more people actually coming and sampling your services and actually talking about them more. 
So actually think about how you can add extra value to what you're currently doing so that people want to try it more. And that's exactly right. So you have, um, let's say, your bronze package, your silver package, and your gold package. And if you give people three options, so instead of actually going to them, especially if you're going to package things, if you go to them and say, um, you know, I can do a cash flow, or I can do cash flow and um, budgeting for you, or I can actually do cash flow budgeting and actually help you throughout the year to make sure that this is actually going to work. The chances are people are always going to go for that top level one. So you want a price difference between the three. And normally you'll get them at number two or you'll get them at number three. Not many times that people actually buy that number one package. So, but it's how you actually price that. And if you want to actually look further at that option, by all means get in touch and we can actually discuss that one with you. You can upsell. So, you know, we've all been to it to McDonald's and you know would you like fries with that actually learn how to actually do that yourself so um, you know let's do antenatal classes um, and we can do that for one baby but would you like two you know <laughs> so, um, it might actually be you might add um, childcare options into your antenatal classes I don't know so, but really actually think about what it is that you're offering and um, sell the features and the benefits. For you to understand the features and the benefits of what you're trying to sell, you really need to understand what you're delivering to your clients and who your clients are. So it all feeds right back to the very beginning as to who are your target market, what do they look like, what sort of thing are they looking for, and then once you know that, the rest of it will all actually fall into line. So lower your cost of sales. This is actually really critical, and I saw this um, all the time at IRD, where business was fantastic, everything was great, and then something happened, and then all of a sudden, um, they, they had a reduction in income. It might have been that they'd lost a big contract. It might have been that um, COVID-19 hit and um, we no longer, people weren't ready to spend as much money as what they had in the past. And what they did was nothing. So they just sort of sat back and hoped for the best because it's gonna sort itself out. What we need to actually look at if this sort of thing happens and, and you've lost a contract, and I had a discussion with someone a while back and they'd lost a big contract, um, which took out 50 odd grand out of their turnover. But what they didn't do was look at their staff. So they still kept on the same level of staff, yet they'd had a massive hit financially. So sometimes you do need to make really horrible decisions. So, you know, this is about you. You need to be selfish. And you need to make sure that you're actually looking after you. So if that means that you actually need to negotiate early payment discounts with your suppliers, if that means you've got to go to your suppliers and actually say, hey, look, I've been spending this much with you for the last 18 months. I'd now like a discount if I order X or Z. So now we've got to start having those discussions where we're actually looking out for you. We need to lower your cost of sales. You also need to manage the stock. If you are a stock business, the amount of times I've sort of looked at someone and said, how much stock do you have? And they go, oh, 20 grand. But the reality is they've got way more than that. They just didn't, they had no idea. Um, knowing your stock is always a good idea because if, let's, worst case scenario, the business burns down, then we've actually got something on paper to hand to the insurance company to say, I had $30,000 of stock, and then you get paid out for it. If you turn around and go, oh, I had 20, then you've just shortchanged yourself 10 grand. So it's really about making sure that we've got systems in place to manage that stock. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit further down the line too. Minimise your freight. Actually look at that. Review your suppliers. Reduce rework and wastage. Um, all of these things actually cost you a small fortune. 
So now is the time to actually start looking at what you can do in your business. Anyone got any ideas on what they're going to be focusing on? So we, we, how can we package things, or how can we actually increase dollar value, and how can we increase, uh, decrease your cost of sales? Anyone want to share? No. That's okay. So um, earlier I actually said that discounting was dangerous. And I just want to show you the, oops. Um, here we've got sales of $10,000. The unit price is um, 10,000 units. The cost is $100. There's a million dollars in sales. Our cost is $60 per unit. And so that leaves us with gross profit of $400,000. Wouldn't that be nice? So if we discount our selling price by 10%, 10% is not very much. So we'll discount it by 10%. So that means our sales, $90 per unit, $900,000. Our cost of goods stays the same, $600,000, which means we've got gross profit of $300,000. Still not bad, but we've lost 100 grand just on that 10% discount. If we actually say, no, the price is $100 and admit that 10% of our customers aren't going to buy, then we still get you know, 9,000 people, 9,000 units sold, which gives us $900,000. Our cost of goods is still that $60 but our gross profit is 360,000. So we're actually 60 grand better off by reducing our sales rather than our price. So it's not always about, um, and I, when I see shops, you know, 20% off, 50% off, there is um, ways that we can do that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not really worthwhile. Look at that, Kerry, you must be a bookkeeper or an accountant. 25% loss in profit. <laughs> so um, really challenge. And if you've got friends or anything and they're looking at actually discounting their rates, actually explain to them this whole premise that sometimes they're better off to have more time and more money than they are to be flat tack on a lower rate. Um, Linda just commented, I would implement a referral program, get video testimonials, and further down the line, sponsor a sports team. That would actually be really quite cool. Very cool. So, any questions on the discounting, or does it actually make perfect sense? Okay. So working capital cycle, this is something you need to sort of understand for your cash flow. If you're a service provider, it's cash, work in progress, so that means you, you have the money in the bank, you go off and you do a job. Well, let's take um, Greg, for example. People pay him money, he actually does the training, um, he then actually sells. So I'm now going to give you five training sessions and then, so that creates an account. Um, he sends out an invoice to someone. They then actually pay the invoice. He then does the work. He creates a sale. So it's actually quite a simple working cycle, working capital cycle. So that is how our money is actually rotating. If you're a retailer, you've got the money, you purchase the stock, you pay the supplier, you then have the stuff sitting on the shelf waiting for it to sell, or you may be a plumber, um, so you've got all your equipment sitting there. You then actually go off, do the job, you send out the invoice, goes to accounts receivable, then goes to cash. And so you've got a lot more steps as a retailer, manufacturer type entity. So which one, I think the majority of you might actually be service provider? but then some of you may be a retailer. So what we're going to cover is, um, I need to move that over to there. So 
So this is your cash conversion cycle, and it's and it would be worthwhile to actually get to understand exactly what your cash conversion cycle is. So if we actually think about it, and we're going to look at this from say a wholesaler's point of view, they buy the stock from the supplier. Say zero, they buy the stock, and then at day 45, so they've bought it on the say the 10th. And then 45 days later on the 20th, they actually go and pay the supplier for the stock. And that's when the money actually leaves the bank account at day 45. So they've had the ability to sell the stock from day zero to day 45. But they didn't. They then sell the stock to the customer on day 60. But that is via an invoice. And then the invoice is actually paid on day 120. So that's when the money comes in. So your cash conversion cycle is the difference from when the money leaves your bank account to when the money comes back in. And to help with your cash flow, it might actually be, if you are a service provider or something like that, you actually get a deposit up front. So then when you go and actually buy stuff, you've actually already received the money to actually cover that cost. But it's important to actually understand what your cash conversion cycle is because that's 75 days, that particular example. If we could actually shorten that by five days, and instead of actually going 20th of the following month, and I honestly don't understand why everyone does 20th of the following month. I think that's just history in New Zealand. But your invoices could be seven days. They could be 14. If we actually reduced that cash conversion cycle from 75 days down to 70, that could, um, and depending on your accounts receivable and your sales and things like that, sometimes that can even bring in an extra grand into your bank account. It can actually improve your cash flow horrendously. So if you've got questions about that, um, and you want me to take a look at your individual business, then I'm more than happy to actually give you some advice on how this would actually work for you. But it's very important to know your cash conversion cycle. So we're going to have a look at oops, that one and this one. So where does the cash go? So our annual sales is a million dollars. And this time around, we've actually increased it to 1.1 million. Our cost of goods will stay the same. And our expenses is now oh, 400,000. So then, you know how you go to your accountant and he says, I've made all this money, and then you're like, well, where's all the money because I don't have it in my bank account? and now he's actually asked you to um, pay a $20,000 tax bill and you've got probably two grand in the bank. This is how this is all actually gonna come about. So here we've got net profit of $200,000. If we actually decrease your accounts receivable from 30K down to 20, and we decrease your inventory because we don't want to be holding a whole bunch of stock because that's only going to increase your cash conversion cycle. So we're going to decrease that down to 15,000. And we're actually, let's be really cheeky for a bit, um, we're not going to pay our accounts payable as quickly as what we have in the past. So we're going to go 15,000. And suddenly we've gone from 110,000 operating cash flow to 180. So, so just by actually doing this, we've been able to give it a whole bunch more um, 
money for you to operate your business by. So then you've got your tax has now gone from 42,000 to 56. Yeah, that's not fun. Um, we're still going to take our 50,000 in drawings. And so the big thing that people don't quite um, understand when they go and put everything on tick, they go and get a loan, um, those loan payments of $10,000 every month are not going to impact your profit. So that is actually going to come out after your profit. So you're going to pay tax, and then on top of that, you're still going to pay your $10,000 every month for your loan repayments. So if we say we've got loan repayment of $25,000, then we're still actually getting far down. So we've got 180k up here, that we're paying tax on that, yet we've actually only got cash flow of 49. So that's a really, really rough example of how things actually um, work out. Any questions on that one? No, none at all? So essentially what this actually is explaining is that we can actually, let's just for example, we're going to go um, 50,000 to accounts payable and 35,000 there. So suddenly we're down. So managing your um, Managing your accounts receivable, so that is people who owe you money and the amount of stock and the work in progress that you've got, that is what's going to impact on your cash flow. We want to get people paying your invoices um, as fast as we possibly can because that's going to improve your cash flow. We also don't want to be paying $20,000 for a whole bunch of stock that we have sitting in the back room waiting for someone to come along and buy it because that's also impacting your cash flow. So for us to improve, we need to manage your accounts receivables, the money owed to you from your clients and your stock. If we can actually improve that, we improve your cash conversion cycle, you get more money into your bank account. That makes sense? So, the Business 101 cycle, we've got used to generate income, assets. We have all of our assets. That might be our employees. I, I hate it when people think of their employees as um, liabilities because without them we can't make money. So your assets, it could actually be that we get um, a new loan, it can be um, anything that we've got that we use to generate income. That then turns into profit. So we get a return on those assets. So we've gone and bought a car and we are a driving Mercedes franchise and um, we're now able to use that asset to actually generate profit. So some of the things that we're actually going to make money from is um, sales growth. So we increase our sales we increase our margins in that area. So it might actually be that we've been able to get a lower fuel rate, so therefore our hourly rate that we're charging to drive our vehicle is actually now giving us more money. Um, however, the drains in that section are unchecked overhead expenses. So if we haven't kept on top of our insurances, our telephone bill, our power, or any of those other expenses, then that's going to suck all our money away. So we do need to keep an eye on all of our areas, not just our, um, the cost of goods sold, which is all the different little things that we buy to then on sell. So we've got our assets that has turned into profit, which we then actually get cash. So that's generated from our business activities. 
So one of the big things here, cash gains, faster collection of your accounts receivable, so people paying you faster is, is really good. Um, decreases in stock or work in progress and slower payment of suppliers. So it might actually be, and I've got one of my clients likes to pay everyone on the 15th because that shows people how good he is at paying his bills. If he actually paid them on the 20th, he would have five extra days of having the money in his bank account which would actually take cash flow pressures off. So that's just something to actually think about is when is the right time to pay all of your bills? Bearing in mind, you don't want to make them wait 60, 90 days. You still want to pay them at a, at a reasonable time frame. But we also need to conserve your cash flow at the same time and make sure that you're doing okay. Um, cash drains in that area is slow collection of debtors, so that's you just letting people pay when they're ready to. Um, increase in stock, business loan repayments, business tax payments, and um, paying your suppliers too fast. So there's a, there's a nice even line there. And then once we've got the cash, then it goes to the owners, and the owner can then actually take money, and they can actually pay their own personal loans. So it's um, important to actually understand how this actually works. And at the end of the day, you'll notice we've got the assets, we've got the profit, we've got the cash. If we have not maintained that very well, the only person that's going to miss out here is the business owner, and the business owner won't be taking any cash. And we don't want that. The cash flow management. Um, Review your debtors process. Actually look at how you manage your customers and it might actually be. Right now you're going to be thinking about who your client is. You might actually find that the people that you have always worked with are not the people that you want to continue working with. Um, so really get a handle on the types of people that you actually want to work with. Ensure customers know your payment expectations. If it is payment within seven days, make sure they're aware that it is payment in seven days. And if you say it's payment in seven days and they don't pay for 21 days, actually say my payment terms are seven days. Don't just let them pay in 21 days time because then once you've set that expectation, they're gonna keep doing it and it's your cash flow that's impacted. Um, Create a stock control system. Monitor sales trends, so really take a look and you're gonna to have to manage this process for the next few months at least. Determine a monthly drawing amount and um, actually review your finance asset purchases. So really have a look and see what you've got on tick at the moment and what we can do about that. Look at your accounts payable, so that is paying your suppliers. Um, extend credit terms where possible. So if you've currently got an arrangement where you pay 10 days after, actually go to your suppliers and actually say, can I pay on the 20th of the month? Or if it's payment on delivery, can I pay 10 days after? Just see if you can actually stretch this out to better your cash flow. Talk to them, talk to them a lot and actually negotiate better outcomes. You know, this is all about you guys, it is now time to be selfish and actually make sure that we're getting the right support in place for you to be successful. So, quickly we'll run through this. Traditionally your break even point is where your sales equals your cost, therefore your net profit is zero. We do not want to be operating at break even point. So a more realistic calculation includes your personal living costs. So when I say working with clients and they're going, yep, so we're doing well, I'm not losing any money, but you're also not getting paid. So if, for example, if your gross profit is 60% and your total cost 300,000, then your break even point is 500,000 in sales because we need you to take home some money. This is about you at the end of the day. And if you need $50,000 to reduce debt, then your break-even point will increase to 583000 So we need to actually start factoring in that you deserve to be paid for the work that you do. 
So if you would like a hand to actually understand where your business is actually at and what you need to aim for, by all means get in touch. But when you look at your break-even point, we need to look at the cost to actually run your business, the cost of you actually getting paid a fair amount for your actual work that you do, and then that's how we work out what your sales need to be. So it's not just about running the business, it's about supporting you as well. And from there we can actually start aiming to actually get sales that give you what you need. Budgets and forecasts. Everyone should actually have a profit and loss. Um, there is on our website, there is a video, Understanding Your Financial Accounts. Um, so really, if you're not, I'm not sure what information your, your accountant is giving you, Go and watch that video because it's um, we've had good feedback off it and apparently it's quite simple to understand. Um, so really keep an eye on that profit and loss in your business. Make sure even Wave Accounting, that's a free accounting software, you can run a free um, a profit and loss off that. So really keep an eye on that over the next few months. We need to actually understand your working capital. What is actually going to happen? What is your cash conversion cycle? We need to know all of that sort of stuff to get you through these next few months. So if we can understand that, then I think you'll actually be feeling a lot more confident in what you need to achieve. Analyse your finance. Asset purchases, loan payments, all that sort of stuff. And in your forecast we need to allow for drawings and tax and GST and all of that lovely fluffy stuff so everyone's cash flow is going to be very very different and what is it what your cash flow is based on is your cash conversion cycle so if we know that you're going to bring in um, $10,000 one month and 75% of your clients actually pay their bills by due date then that means that we get 7,500 in sales the next month. So understanding who your clients are, what they like to do, when they're paying, we need to understand all those trends to be able to give you a really good picture of what your future looks like. Um, at the moment, I do have some free licenses to a cash flow app, Float, which if anyone is interested in trialing that, let me know and we can actually have a discussion and float is very, very expensive, um, which is why we're gonna use the free one. <laughs> um, but it will actually tell you that on the 8th of May, you run out of money in your bank account. So, and it all feeds into zero, and so then it actually can tell you what your position's gonna be. So get in touch if that's of interest. We need to develop um, your key performance indicators, your KPIs, actually starting to understand what you need in business, how you need to do things, um, and actually start tracking. Now is the time for you to actually stay on top of your business. You've had some time off. Like We know that you've had a couple of weeks off, four weeks off. Um, you've actually been thinking about your business. This is why you're all actually here. And um, now is the time, do not go back when, when lockdown is lifted and when you can actually start operating, do not go back to just being run by your business. You need to run your business. So stay in charge, stay um, measuring your results, stay looking at your financial figures because that's how you're going to make a big difference and we're going to get through this. And this is one of the big key things. Procrastination makes easy things really hard and hard things harder. Prime example, I was procrastinating doing an assignment because for some reason I decided this year is a great year to do a um, postgrad in accounting. Um, and so I actually didn't do my assignment when I probably should have, which then meant that because my procrastination would have been easy for me to do that assignment, I left it, it then actually got really hard because I was fighting against the clock as well as actually having to do my real job. Really analyse what you're doing and how you're doing it. Are you procrastinating because you can't be bothered or is it the fact that this is something that you need support on? 
the power of an idea is in its implementation. So hopefully from today, you guys have come up with a whole bunch of things that you can implement in your business to um, then actually improve your end results once as we go down along these next few months. The power of an idea is its implementation. There is no point in having fantastic ideas and doing nothing with them. And decisions times actions times accountability equal results. So we've got um, coffee groups that we run for our business owners and these are they cover nationwide. And one of the big things is everyone comes together, it's a small group, no more than eight, and you make plans, you set goals, and then the group holds you to account. Because without that accountability, the chances are you're probably not going to perform incredibly well. Your next steps. Set aside time to work on your business. Now is the perfect time for you to be focusing on your business. Now is the time for you to actually set all your social media in place. It is the time to actually get everything nailed so that when this is all over, you can actually just go back to doing what you do and make money. Set goals and review progress. This is all part of our KPI stuff. If we don't have goals, how do we know whether you're going in the right way? And I sort of you know, I liken it to, we're all now sitting in the vehicle, we've got our car keys, are we driving to Auckland or Wellington? Because if our plan is to go to Auckland, there's no point driving to Wellington. So we've got to get that understood right at the front. Nurture your customers. Now is the time to actually care. Exactly what Greg said, he's out there supporting clients. Right now they actually don't want them, but in the future they're actually going to. And when they're ready, the first person they're going to come is Greg. So just really care about your clients. Keep on top of your business, understand, monitor your KPIs, and if you would like, we can actually have that discussion around what KPIs would work for your business. Put budgets, forecasts, and processes in place. So we are here to support you on any of this sort of um, thing that you actually need. And actually, if you've got a team, get their buy-in. So we actually need them to understand the position that you're currently in and where the journey that you're about to go on. No point in you going on a journey on your own and leaving your team behind. So we can help you with cash flow forecasting. We can um, actually do cash flow management coaching. So this is where we actually will sit down with you and work through this is your accounts receivable process. This is your, your um, creditors process. This is how your sales process. So we can actually itemise each part of your business and, and streamline it and help you understand where you're going. Um, the beauty thing is that we are approved providers under the Regional Business Partner Scheme and if you're not sure what that is actually is, come back and let me know. I'll forward you the link. At the moment, and the government have said this morning that they're now going to sink more money into the Regional Business Partner Scheme. Um, so there is support available to you. To qualify under that, all you need is to be GST registered, be currently trading and have less than 50 full-time employees. So it is really important that if you want the extra training and the extra support, it is there available for you. So don't feel alone. We can help you and the funding will actually support you in, in learning this stuff as well. So my challenge to you guys is to get started now. Write down three actions or three projects that will add value to your business. A problem is an opportunity to create a project. Um, Brent, the grant link at the moment is 5K, so um, it is up to $5,000. So that means that the government, this is just going back to that regional business partner thing, um, up to $5,000. You do actually need to have an assessment with a uh, growth advisor, uh, which at the moment is taking 10 minutes, um, but it's generally an hour, and then they will actually talk to you about what your needs are. And it might be that you spend $1,000 with a marketing expert. It might be that you spend another $1,000 with an HR person, and then you spend $1,000 with a um, health and safety advisor. So you can actually split it up. Um, 
but uh, the COVID funding that is actually out there at the moment is 100% funding. So the 5K, the normal funding is 50% funded. The COVID funding right now is 100% funded. So it is very much, we, they, the government are supporting small business to get them through this. So there's a huge opportunity. Going back to our slide, a problem is an opportunity to create a project. A problem is not something that you can um, just live with. We need to overcome that problem. So this is where you need to get creative and start actually doing things differently. And remember, doing nothing is simply not an option. If you do nothing, you probably won't survive COVID-19. Time is change. Any questions, feel free. Um, someone's got to ask at least one question, otherwise I think you're all asleep. So is there any support for businesses who aren't GST registered? Um, I'm waiting to see what they actually come out with. Like they announced on the news last night that there's a whole new package coming for small to medium enterprise. Um, what I see this morning is that um, they have announced, and, and it's going through Parliament at the moment, they're changing legislation, that you can, if you've got losses, um, you're going to make a loss in this current year and you've paid tax in previous ones, then you can actually claim that back in and have that cash flow now. Um, I'm interested to see where they go and that announcement is coming tomorrow, so we'll know more but um, it's an interesting conversation to actually think about what is going to happen to those non-GST registered businesses. Hayley, is that if you've paid tax for March 2019 or March 2020, which is just completed? So if you are going to say, you know, you've paid tax in March 2020, and you're now going to make a loss in 2021. This is my understanding, this came out at 8.30 this morning. Um, and until it goes through Parliament, we don't know the exact what it looks like. But right. if you actually make a, you are predicted to actually make a loss in 2021, then we can actually claim that loss back from the 2020 year and get some of your prop tax paid back. Right. So it is very much now is the time to actually have that cash flow forecast. Now is the time to be working with your accountant to make sure that everything is lined up and that you're you're good to go. Thank you. Um, my understanding, Kerry, is that you've had to have paid the tax to then be able to get the refund back. So if you've just made losses, and I've got a few clients that I sought this morning and who went, oh yay, but no, um, the losses still sit there. It is only if you've paid prof tax that you can then actually claim it back. Sorry, what kind of tax was that, Hayley? Was that? So that's um, provisional tax, and it all works yeah. out, it goes back to like your terminal tax. So if you're looking at making a profit of say 2 million, you can actually reduce that profit down to actually claim that prop tax back now, rather than actually waiting until the end of the financial year. However, if you do get it wrong, you will be liable for use of money interest. So this is very much a moving beast. We don't know what's going to happen. It is going to be a little bit difficult and you will need your accountant to support you through it. Um, but that is something that's coming. And until it goes through Parliament, um, I think at the end of the month, 28th of April is in my head, um, and they are backtracking it right back to um, right back to where we are now. So the date is going to go backwards. Um, Janine, they've registered with a regional business partner and you haven't heard anything back from them. 
um, chased them up. I know I had a discussion with them yesterday and um, they are trying to ring, like they've just had so many people. Um, these, these webinars that we're running, there's a few of us actually providing these webinars to support small business and uh, we've had 280 people actually attend these webinars across the small group of us. So for everyone to actually be phoned is actually quite a huge piece of work. So if that is the case, I would say follow them up and actually have a chat to them and see where you're at. Let me let me know if you don't get any luck and I'll I'll um I'll do something for you. So on the cash flow side of life, does anyone have any questions that you would like um to ask? Cash conversion cycle, how to create a cash flow, anything like that. You talked about the float app. Yes. Um would you, you know, and obviously a majority of us probably do use Xero. Um, how well is it integrated? Is it, is it quite well integrated into? Very. So Float is, Float is very expensive. And, and through this COVID thing, I'm, I've got them to give me um, free licenses until the end of May, which is really quite cool. And so Float actually partners up with Xero. It takes all of your data out of Xero. It looks at what your history has been and then um, create your cash flow forecast for you for up to two years. And then you can go and create different scenarios and say, well, what if I do this? What's the impact? Um, and it will actually say, you know, you're going to run out of money on the 8th of May. Your bank account will be dry. And then you can go and create a different scenario and then it will actually say, well, now you've got till the 20th of July. And so it actually is really quite good Clients have actually come back to me and said it's very clunky. You can actually download a trial yourself. So the, um, the trial is two weeks and it's float app. So F-L-O-A-T app A-P-P dot com. Um, and so you can download and actually have a play with it yourself if you want, or if you want the longer term one, I've got it until the end of May 31st. So, but it is, like $69 a month um, and I'm currently investigating another option as well which may be slightly cheaper and I'll, may, I'll have more details about that one um, hopefully by the end of today which actually will tell you this is how many days it's taking you to pay your bills, this is how many days it's taking you to be paid. So it analyses all of that information for you as well. Great, right, thank you. So any other thoughts? Cash flow is um, horrendous. It is the lifeblood of um, our businesses, unfortunately. So it is really critical that now is the time you get into the habit of actually analysing your money, where your money is going, what it's doing, all that sort of stuff. So my parting thought for today, never take your eyes off the cash flow because it's the lifeblood of business. You can have the best balance sheet ever, but that does not mean that you've got a great business because you need money to make your business work. So if you've got any questions about your, your particular cash flow, we're more than happy to have a discussion with you around your business and what you need to do. Um, so by all means, get in touch with us. We're, we're here to help you. Yep, so we've got your email, Linda. And um, since you've just come on board as a client, you're going to get all this anyway. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so at the end of the day, there is new stuff coming up all the time. Next week, I am actually going to run a webinar, Getting Paid and different ways that you can actually think about getting paid. Um, we are going to be adding to our list with different things. As clients come to us with problems, we're now creating webinars that we can actually educate for the benefit of all. So um, 
by all means, if you've indicated when you registered that you want to be kept in touch of our education program, we will notify you of what's coming up. Um, and if you don't want to receive our emails anymore, just let us know and we'll stop sending them to you. But otherwise, if you need anything, get in touch. And on Friday, we are running Building a Better Business. And on Monday, we have got zero training. So we can help you design your reports that you need to be able to get the information about how your business is performing. So on that note, if there's no other questions, I'll let you go back to doing your gardens for the day. Thanks, Hayley. Yeah, no worries. Thanks very much, eh? We're really informative. No worries at all. Thank you, Hayley. So get in touch if we can help. Cool. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.